Hey everybody, final thoughts time for Alma Mater, and yeah, no surprise, this is a great, great Euro. Of course it is, because it's from Achitoka. I have no idea how to pronounce that, but this is a an Italian design group that is behind so many really phenomenal games that have come out over the last few years. I mean, we're talking Alma Mater and Coimbra and Lorenzo Il Magnifico and Grand Austria Hotel and Egizia, um and a, a Terra Mara. This is a group of designers to watch, men and women, and I've been super impressed by all the designs, and Alma Mater is no different. It is just the latest one where they knock it out of the park, coming up with really clean, simple mechanisms, but insanely deep, crunchy Euro gameplay. And interestingly, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people are going to want to compare and contrast Coimbra specifically to Alma Mater because they are both fr from artist uh, Chris Williams and the art is definitely the same. In fact, I know some people will be upset that some of the character art from Coimbra has just been transplanted over here. But to me, that just means they're in the same universe and characters from one game have moved over to another. I think that's really awesome. And I certainly spent a lot of time raving about how awesome the art was in Coimbra because it uh, underscored just how great it is to have a dry, dusty, soulless uh, you know, cube, or in this case, book-pushing Euro, that looks so bright and colorful and fun. And it just has a sense of joy and whimsy to it. And you know, Chris Williams knocked it out of the park there. It's great again. We absolutely love the look of the game. And of course, the production of these cool little plastic books. I mean, that's they didn't have to do this. These could have just been uh, cardboard tokens with pictures of books on them. Uh, but but, you know, the production value is excellent. And the gameplay. Let's actually talk about the gameplay. At its heart, this is a worker placement game. And honestly, the worker placement is the least interesting element of this game. Because it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, um, you've seen this before, games where, oh, you got where I want to go, but I can still go there, but I have to spend two workers now. And then if another player needs to go there, they need to spend three and all that. You know, that works great. It's certainly solid here. But what's really interesting, what really sets this game apart is how you use these books. These are multi-use uh, because they are used in one way to recruit students, in another way to recruit uh, faculty, and in another way uh, to generate income. And it's when you decide to put these, start teaching these to your uh, pupils, that they become fascinating because you put them basically on a uh, tray and hand it to everybody else at the table and say, hi, would you like knowledge? Um, you can get it really cheap, direct from me. Hey, you'll even get some victory points if you get it cheap from me, and you'll be giving me money. That synergy and overlap between players is awesome. I always love a game that can bring interaction between players in a way that isn't just all about stealing or killing or destroying or just really kind of boring, played out ideas that have been around forever. <laughs> Alma Mater is very, very fresh in that it finds ways to create um, you know, direct and indirect interaction between players because, yes, of course, I want to put all my books out there because that means that's just guaranteed income for me for the rest of the game. But, um, you know, if you buy them from me, hey, I'll take the cash right now, but I will be giving you victory points as well, which is an interesting thing. I didn't go too much into it. The individual bookshelves that go on your, you know, the, these tiles that go on your bookshelf, which is where players can buy from, they all have one, two, or three victory points on them. And it doesn't matter how many books you buy from a player when you're buying, you only get to pick one. So of course you pick the highest one, and then they get flipped, so they will not generate points anymore. And the more people buy from you, the less they're going to want to buy from you in the future, which is a brilliant idea because it means players are going to be incentivized to go and intermingle with everybody instead of, oh, let's just freeze that one person out and just buy back and forth from each other. Oh, we're not getting points from each other anymore. I guess maybe I need to go buy from you instead. And the interesting thing is, the way you seed these into your shelf can make you more or less attractive. Because if you really want people to come buy from you when it costs the most, so you'll get a lot of income really quick rather than waiting for income to come very slowly, then you um, submit your big, fat, juicy three-pointer. Um, and if you're not interested in that, if you, I know I don't want anybody to buy from me, please stay away from me. Then um, you just go on ahead and use your one pointers. Uh, try, I mean, you only have seven, um, so sooner or later you are going to put those out there. But um, you know, the question is whether people are going to buy. Although interestingly, there is one student. If you take this student, it lets you reprogram the victory points people get when they buy from you.
And so you can use that to make yourself more or less attractive, which is interesting in and of itself right there. That's a big part of the game. And I will admit, it is a tricky part to wrangle. In fact, actually, I mean, one thing I will, one thing I'll definitely complain about, I, I think I am way over designers saying, hey, you know what, how you start this game? Let's do a card draft. Come on, designers. Oh, I, I just want to play the game. I don't want to have to play a whole nother game before I can play the game. Just let me draw five and discard two rather than have to do it. Well, let me see this. No, no one's going to... That one might come back to me. I need to think that... Ah, I hate starting with card drafts in games. Unless they do it smart, like one of the variants that came with Agricola, which is, you know, draw more than you have and then discard down rather than, you know, draw a certain number and spend 10 minutes before the game actually starts doing this warm-up that is then, ugh, was not happy about that here, would have much rather they did it a different way. And by the same token, it can be a bit of a slog to decide, right, how should I stack my bookshelves right at the beginning? Before I even know what my strategy is going to be, before I know if I want to hold on to my books or if I want people to come and buy them for me so I can just get those influx of cash so I don't have to waste time going to the bishop because um, I only have so many workers, etc, etc. Um, so, I mean, other than that start, oh, you know what? Actually, I guess I could say, I should on, on, on Jen's behalf complain about one other thing. When you first set this game up, it is daunting. It is overwhelming. The sheer amount. Eight different, you know, 16 different students, which to be fair, that's the same ones every time. So over time, you will get used to this. Eight, a, a, a combination of eight professors and for each player, four chancellors. The one you start with and the three more that you could earn. Even still, that's a lot. And I think that's going to be something that you get used to with repeated play. But your first couple of plays, you're like, whoa, I'm cross-eyed. I don't even know where to start. And then on top of that, you want me to do a draft? And on top of that, you want me to do this weird seating of bookshelves? I would have liked to see an express setup version of this game where you just kind of, you know, do things quicker and easier. That's a minor complaint, though, and it's really only going to be a problem for your first couple of games. So just wanted to get that uh, out there. But, you know, once you've got this game down, um, it really sings. Although, I'll warn you, another thing. Some people might not like about this game. A good portion of this game you will be strapped. You will be cash poor or knowledge poor, and you have to work hard to pull stuff together. This is definitely not an easy breezy, drown you in resources kind of game. This game makes you sweat and struggle to get stuff done. Now that said, over the course of the game, as you get a bigger collection of professors and students, you will become more and more powerful and you will be pulling off monster moves that seemed impossible to you. So there's a great escalation, but it takes a while to get to that. And those first few rounds, and there's only six rounds, and you only have four workers, are going to be um, tough going. And that's not a problem at all. I mean, Jen and I, we like a challenge. We like a game that makes us work for it. And we get that really big, huge super turn. It's so satisfying. Um, but it's something to be aware of uh, because this is definitely not a generous game at all. Um, another thing I should talk about. Oh, I really, I think I'm on the whole pretty pleased with this system for two player that just brings a third player in that makes no decisions. All it does is it just randomly blocks different spaces and does a little bit of research and gives players a few opportunities. Super simple. Uh, works nicely. I'd like to see it in more games. One thing that's odd about it though, because there is right from the get go, if I were playing this as a true three player game, if I need to go get books, and I'm not going to get my own because I don't need any more books. You are incentivized. You are required to get books of other players because you can't do anything with just one monolithic approach of only my books. I got to get other books. Dictionaries are too expensive to rely on. I got to pay you or I got to pay the dummy player in a two player game. Now, in a three player game, I got to play you or I got to play uh, Betty over there. And then it gets very interesting. Well, who do I pay? Betty, oh, I get more points, but it's going to cost me a little bit more. But I think, actually, you're doing much better. So I think I'm probably going to be better off going with Betty because I think you're more of a threat. That's all very interesting. In a two-player game, what Jen and I found is we completely, for the first half of this game, for the most part, almost completely ignore each other. Yes, when the books get super cheap, when they get all the way to the end, we might do a little bit of purchasing because, hey, I'm not giving you much money and I'm maybe getting some points. But for the most part, we really just focus on, well, rather than give you money, I could give money to the bank. And that, I love the system. I do wish, though, that it just wasn't so easy, that it kind of short-circuits a significant portion of the game for like the first half of the game. 
in a, but it only happens in two players. Like something, if, yeah, if I buy from the dummy player, I have to pay full price, but half of it goes to my opponent and half of it goes into the bank. Then I might be incentivized. Well, you know, I'm going to have to give you something anyway. Uh, so maybe I should just buy from you directly. I'll only be giving you a, an extra coin, but I'll be getting uh, more books than I otherwise might rather than going there. And you would get more of that sense of the game that you get at higher player counts, which, like I said, eventually comes as the game goes on. It gets to the point where I, I, I would much rather buy from you and just get it. every extra victory point I get in this game is huge rather than continuing to abuse avoid giving you money, but I'd like that to be there right from the get-go. These are all very minor complaints, though, in what is overall a very spectacular... Oh, a solid workman-like worker placement game that is elevated by the interdependency and interplay between players. Oh, I forgot! The other way the players are very, very interesting, um, intertwined, is once somebody gets a professor, they have set the price for that professor for everybody else. Yes, other players don't have to pay money. They, st I mean, So they, they're basically getting a huge discount. Seven, eight bucks if I wait for you to buy? But on the flip side, that means I don't have control, and you can specify what it is um, that we have to pay in terms of knowledge, and that's a really cool idea. Very interesting. Uh, kind of has shades of a um, you know, I, you know, Isle of Sky, setting prices for other players um, based on the race. The worker placement is good. It's solid. I love the setup variability. At first, I thought, man, I want to see variable uh, students, but that's okay. There is more than enough variety with the milestones, or was it the uh, the chancellors, the chancellors, and the professors, uh, and the randomized setup. Which again, I love the randomized setup. I've loved this kind of idea ever since I played Zulkin. Do any of these people work on Zulkin? I wonder. But anyway, although again, I would have much rather not had to do a draft. I'd rather just draw five and pick three just to get the game going faster because I want to get to the game. Um, so yeah, Alma Mater is super sharp. Like I said, some people are going to complain about the art being repurposed, but this is effectively a sequel. These are the same characters. I wish they had names. They still are basically anonymous characters, which is something I complained about. Just a, a missed opportunity. But on the whole, you know, the fact that at least I know who these people are. Oh, these are students. These are um, professors. I can now go back to regular Coimbra and say, oh, at least I know who a few of these people are. Uh, that's the student from Coimbra. That's the professor from Coimbra. So that's nice. That's appreciated. Um, oh, speaking of nice and appreciated, like Coimber before it, I very much appreciate uh, the nod to inclusivity that even though, strictly speaking, there were not female professors and female students, uh, you know, they weren't quite woke enough for that. I say to heck with history. Let's ensure that everybody has fun sitting at the table. Um, although they did miss a trick. There's no... Um, uh, it'd be great to actually have racial diversity amongst the cast as well as gender diversity. And so, uh, yeah, it, it was a nice halfway there. Maybe on the next one we'll go, and maybe um, uh, uh, Chris Williams will do some new characters, uh, maybe with some different skin tones or, or what have you, just to um, you know make sure everybody can feel like they've got a friendly, familiar face sitting at the table. And those are the final thoughts, folks. Thanks for watching. Have a very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Bye. Bye.